now we come to our final presentation. Um, it will be Lazarus and Daisy or just Lazarus? <laughs> Lazarus, you have to help me with your last name. Matizerova, from the uh, National Research Foundation in uh, South Africa. And he has just stepped into a new position. So uh, thank you very much for coming. And I'll turn it over to you. Do you want to use this mic? Ladies and gentlemen, um, representing South Africa in Africa, I think that's uh, what has always been. Um, we are trying to recruit as many members from the African continent, but I think the problem we have is, um, you know, traveling. Some of the countries they are not as fortunate to be like South Africa, etc. And also priorities differ in you know, some of these uh, African countries. From our side, as I mentioned, we are trying to drive um, open access, particularly for the continent. Uh, being South Africa is the hub of uh, university training in Africa in terms of um, diversity and originality of the, um, our, our um, academia. They come from different parts of Africa in different domains, etc. So, as you can see, these are facts and figures. We have 54 countries in the continent, uh, which are all members of the African Union, where some of the open access initiatives are starting to build up with regards to how uh, the ministries of science and education are looking at open access. And then, if we look at raw, uh, an open door. We have 150 uh, African repositories that are registered there, and of note is uh, uh, row is 137. Then in South Africa, we have about 26 public universities, of which most of these have repositories, except for two. We have two brand new universities that we have in the past two years, and uh, so we have actually more than uh, 24 repositories that we are harvesting from, particularly on the thesis and dissertation space. So, by default, uh, this space is the main software that is used in South Africa and also in Africa. In South Africa alone, we have 35 T-Space users and as the National Research Foundation, we have easier to work with this space uh, in terms of implementing uh, repositories, networks. So the numbers tell you uh, the biggest users in Africa in terms of open access adoption. The second will be Kenya with 26 repositories, Nigeria 20, Algeria 13, Tanzania 11, Zimbabwe 10, Egypt 5, Ghana 4, and the rest is 2 or 1. And of this, you can see the number of countries that have adopted repositories. There are quite few from the 54 that I have mentioned. And if we look at open access policies and mandates that have been adopted in Africa, there are 23 open access um, registered uh, policies and mandates, of which in Southern Africa, where South Africa is, we have nine, and of which all those nine are from South Africa. So West Africa is two, um, Northern Africa, four, Eastern Africa, eight. So among the universities and academias that have um, um, registered their open access is the National Research Foundation, which is a mandatory open access uh, uh, policy. Whereas with the university, they are still in the transition. Some of these policies are not very effective. And we, they are actually looking up to the NRF to drive a national policy on open access. So together with our Academy of Science of South Africa, ASAM, which is an open access publisher, we are trying our best to influence a national open access policy, a national open data policy, etc. Uh, this is the domain in which we work uh, um, for the South African Science and Knowledge.
research ecology. So you find at the top level, we have the ministries that are engaged in some form of science, training, etc. So as a sister, um, our sister ministry is the TSD, which is the Department of Science and Technology. So they are the ones that support funding to uh, infrastructure, um, research uh, outputs, etc. Then the Department of Higher Education and Technologies, they also fund academics, particularly um, the research outputs and other resources that they provide. Then we have um, national research facilities, uh, for those that know the SKA, which is part of the NRF, where they look at the telescopic um, um, arena, etc. So we also have the medical research councils and the other uh, council of geosciences, NEXA for nuclear sciences, uh, SUN for environment, and, 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 and etc. So these are the big um, sort of uh, domains that we want to influence in terms of how open access and repositories should be uh, implemented within South Africa and the agencies that support science, knowledge, ecology. So from the NRF's open access statement, which is now the, the tool that we are driving uh, the implementation of repositories, tools and um, the policies, these are some of the things that we have already implemented. We require that all open access journal, um, articles published in journals, commercial or open access, and conference proceedings and book chapters, etc., they must be in the public domain, either through the gold or green uh, rules of open access. And particularly on our side, which we started implementing the data sets at the position in the repository as a requirement for our researchers who we find. So this should be starting to emerge in the coming year as institutions start to adopt the data sets uh, repositories. So from the perspective of NRF, we are encouraging all our universities to have repositories uh, for data sets. Um, I think University of Cape Town, for those that are familiar, they have started doing this, University of Pretoria, and also Stellenbosch University. So if you look on this chart, it's just a research, uh, uh, research output, archiving and dissemination um, implementation, and what it implies, this mentioned, uh, your conference proceedings, journal papers, the data sets, and electronic thesis and dissertation, as well as the institutional publication of preprints and postprints. So one of the workflow that is effective or already implemented is the thesis and dissertations. I will show you uh, in the meantime. But on top of um, what we are driving it, which is the dataset publication, NRF is the national DOI registry for datasets uh, published, working with dataset. So, but what we are trying to do on our side as the National Research Foundation is to um, register DOIs that supports uh, publications. Then one of our sister research agents, which is Teresa, is going to be registering the big data. So we have two platforms, publications that are funded by NRF and in other data that a, pub, uh, a researcher will be publishing will go through the national um, uh, Teresa portal. So what we are doing at the moment, we are planting the seeds, encouraging our grantees to register their data sets in order to get DOIs. And just as of uh, this year, the NRF has started to issue contracts to funded researchers to um, acknowledge and also understand uh, when they should be doing their data management plans, etc. So it's a transitional period. We are not uh, sort of policing, but we're encouraging. Uh, but going forward, I think we'll be uh, policing and also tracking. So if you have funded at the end of your grantee when it's completed, if you have not submitted your DMP, you will be required to return some of the money. And so in order to um, educate them, we are working with one of our academics, 
who is a corporate um, um, expert who is based at the University of Cape Town. The NRF is working with him, providing workshops within the country on Creative Commons licenses, etc. So what has happened with regards to data, uh, data sets or open data? The South African government is funding a pilot project across Africa to, in order to promote um, and uh, the implementation of open data repositories. So we are working together with um, Core Data, and this platform was launched um, last year in December. We always have an annual Open Science Data Week at the end of uh, the first two weeks of December. And all uh, ministers of science and higher education in Africa participated in this conference. Um, so what we have done, or what we are trying to do, we are working together with our sister organization, which is ASAF, the Open Access uh, Zero um, um, uh, brand, uh, in order to, uh, to sell this uh, product to the African government, etc. So going forward, the Africa Wide Initiative will promote the development and coordination, coordination of data policies, data training, and data infrastructure. And so far, I think the grant that we have been given is enough to do the advocacy work. Uh, already two workshops have been um, staged on the continent, and hopefully by the end of the year, we will have a national conference on open data. So this pilot uh, phase is supported by our ministry, which is the Department of Science and Technology, uh, and us as the National Research Funder, we are the uh, sort of the monetary agents uh, supporting ASAP, our sister organization, working with the end with Core Data and other uh, council ICU, um, etc. So I think we have sort of moved a gear up in terms of how we look at repositories, repositories for publications, and now going into the terrain of open data uh, repositories. Um, just to illustrate our, um, um, some of the things we have done as the National Research Foundation, this is our South African Data Archive, which my unit manages. We, so far, the data that will be found in this repository comes from all the research that happens in our ministries or government agencies. But going forward, we are going to use this, this space to publish some of the academic um, um, data sets from the funded grantees. So what is going to happen is that this site will be sort of a, an aggregator whereas the universities will have their own uh, repositories. So it's the same concept, um, which we are also trying to do with the current and completed research, which is your equivalent of Chris here in Europe. Um, so far we are working on this project, working with uh, Andre Pauline, from, uh, who is from uh, for Science, he's, he's here in our midst. And this is where we record all the research that are registered or, um, at our universities. So the intention is to uh, interlink this uh, Chris with the full text uh, thesis and dissertations so that they speak to one another. So this uh, repository was launched end of last year. We have over 170,000 um, reports in this database already because we migrated it from an older system to a dispersed system. So to top it up, this is our harvesting uh, infrastructure for ETD in South Africa. And hopefully, if we encourage other African countries, we'll be able to harvest them, their university repositories via this system. As you can see, it tells you the numbers of theses in each particular university. But because of uh, um, um, what you call retrospective digitization of theses, some of the numbers are not telling the numbers of what is uh, the number of theses in those universities. 
But for the universities that are pro open access, you can see the figures are higher. And so far we have already managed to harvest today um, 107,000 theses, uh, which are full text. So this is the same concept that they were going to apply for publications and also data sets. And this is the workshop that we had for Dispersed Chris Africa. And you can see Bolini in the center with, uh, with me in a blue Chelsea t-shirt. <laughs> for those that support Chelsea. Uh, we managed to have 37, uh, 38 participants from mostly uh, South African uh, universities and academies. And we also had people from um, Tanzania, Zimbabwe and Namibia among the participants. So this has, will become one of the ways that we are going to use in order to network African repositories, particularly for those that use this space. But by default, it's the numbers that speak. But we are not saying we are not going to support other softwares that uh, are open access related. So I think at the end of this year, we are going to invite Pauline and any other members from this space and other uh, related um, colleagues that may be among us to be with us in South Africa for another workshop on this space and other open access initiatives. So this will be happening for those that don't like tra uh, traveling in December, you might not be willing to come to South Africa because this is the default month for the Open Science uh, Forum. Um, I would like Daisy to just come in and uh, discuss the issue at which we are looking at also the orchid and the predatory journals in South Africa with regards to funded research uh, from a government perspective. Morning colleagues, before I transition from the 1st of May, I'm with the University of South Africa and, uh, and now I'm also a professor with the University of Johannesburg, so it's full dual roles that I'm performing. So, two weeks in April, we sent out from my university an audit statement to all the investors, all of our science councils, universities and researchers regarding the funding agency's role in enforcing office. So, if you are a student from a university, a researcher, you will never receive a grant from the funding agency if you don't have an OCAD number. We are doing this as part of our workflow because in South Africa we have a, a, a platform called RIMS, it's a research management platform that we use to capture the data because as part of research, our researchers are getting funding for every publication that they get, they get reimbursement from the Department of uh, education to up their publication records and so forth, so they get a grant. But we have picked up that we struggle with the naming, and you know what uh, Oki does? In South Africa, you get one research, a typical example, Naidu. They have thousands of Naidus, and you struggle to align that, and that has been our problem. And also with the issue of dealing with predator journals. We also issued a statement of predator journals because we're trying to have the issues that we have with the use of deceptive publishers and also predator journals. Just for, we have a system where our researchers apply to be ranked as a best in six slash red, and it's a tier of what we have in the airline industry. So you become an integrated researcher, meaning you are the world best known researcher based on your collaborations and the publications that you have. But we have discovered that just for the cycle for 2017 closing date of March the 14th, we had 70% of the applicants, the researchers, publishing in either deceptive journals, deceptive publishing journals or digital journals, 70%. And it's only for them to be acknowledged as the best in since last year. Not just not for funding. So we picked up that with this anecdotal evidence that we have in our system, what's now going to happen when we start looking at those who are applying for grants to do research? And remember, our grants, they go from a three-year cycle to a five-year cycle. 
And just for you to be the best in this category, it's a six year cycle where we give you more money on top of what you get from your institution. Then the funding agency give you another uh, money grant onto your pocket and you can do what you want, attract students, postdocs, and so forth. So this is how we're trying to help this and it's also impacting on Lazarus' role with what we do when we try to harvest into the repository because it also pushes the university side in the science concepts for researchers to also attest to our own access mandate and all these processes that we have. We can discuss this offline on how we work on our workflow because I asked Lazarus to remove the workflow. It's quite complicated if you don't know how the system works in South Africa. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you very much. That was really an interesting whirlwind trip around the world. Um, uh, so I think what we should do now is take a break because the coffee is waiting for us. Um, and I'll talk about the, um, the international accord when we get back after the break for 